Okay, so let us get started. Uh, we just got started into estimation towards the end of the last lecture. Now, for the next few lectures, it is going to be a very interesting journey. Maybe it is the first time that a lot of you are introduced to parameter estimation. So, once again, you will be uh, faced with a lot of new terminology and so on. But I always uh, say this that <coughs> every engineering discipline should have a course on estimation because ultimately it is not just engineers. In fact, today uh, you know I saw some recent statement by some of the leading biologists saying that it is better to read a study mathematics uh, than study biology uh, is what uh, at least he says for biologists it is always a good idea first to study mathematics and then to study biology. So, that is a big change in perspective and attitude and so on. So, not only engineering, but I, I would say every discipline if you want to be uh, doing well in your career, you should go through a course on estimation because you are going to be faced with data at some point in time which you will process further to estimate something. And estimation theory has a lot to offer a uh, lot of interesting exciting ideas, uh, enormous number of contributions have come to this field from uh, of course, uh, statisticians initially, but then later on from uh, people in econometrics and, and then gradually from engineers and so on. So, there is a lot to be learnt. We will not be obviously be able to do full justice to this subject in this uh, course, but what we will learn are the salient aspects that are necessary at least for time series analysis. At some point in time, I do plan to offer an online course at least a 20 hour course on parameter estimation. So, that everybody is familiar with the basics of uh, estimation. I wish I had studied this course when I was uh, an undergraduate or even a grad student. As a grad student, I never went through a formal course on estimation. But so, in that sense, I think all of you are very fortunate to be sitting through at least lectures on parameter estimation. Okay. So, as I said in the last class, what uh, estimation theory has to offer to us is not only methods for estimating, but also methods for assessing the goodness of the estimate and then making some confidence statements. And this also tells you what you are expected to be doing in estimation. Generally, our thinking is when we sit down to uh, estimate some parameters, our job is done as soon as I obtain some estimates. So, uh, uh, the simplest example is fitting a straight line. If I am fitting a straight line, high school uh, thinking is okay, some data has been given, I draw a scatter plot, fit a straight line. That too, I do not do anything these days with the click of a mouse, the software does the fit for me. I do the uh, kind of a lip service and say, well, here are the slopes and intercept estimates, see you uh, live happily ever after, that is it. And this is what our thinking is when it comes to parameter estimation. But there is so much more that one has to do uh, and uh, some of the key things that one has to do in estimation is apart from providing what are known as point estimates. So, whatever we calculate are called point estimates. We have to be able to say what is the uncertainty shrouding the estimates, right. In the sense whatever estimate I am providing will be in error. So, what is the uh, magnitude of error that you expect? to uh, see in these estimates and as I said the last one making confidence statements where what do you think is a region for the truth, where do you think the true value is. So, we will go from a journey of point estimation to so called interval estimation that is how our journey will uh, go on. So, what we will do is right now get introduced to the uh, basics of estimation and the base in a, in a basic uh, estimation theory, uh, sorry in a basic estimation exercise, what are the elements that participate? In any estimation theory, you will see these elements. As you see on the screen, there is a schematic. The first element in estimation is the data itself. It is uh, uh, all of us hopefully understand what is estimation. It is a method of systematically inferring the unknowns, taking into account the uncertainties in the data. and also taking into account the uncertainties in any other information that you may have. So, if you see on the left, we have what is known as 
known information and this known information should not be thought of as only data. It includes any other prior information you may have of the parameters or of the process everything constitutes this known information. But by and large when we say information the minimal thing that you are looking for is data. By, by data I mean observations at least in the time series context. Given these observations which is the food for estimation no data practically no estimation ok. So, data is the food for estimation and we will come back to that statement a bit later. Apart and once this food is made available this food has to be digested right. You need some support systems to digest this ultimately if you look at the analogy of uh, we consuming food the role of the digestive system is to convert the food to useful energy that is what is the role of the digestive system. Here we have instead of a digester we have estimator. What does this estimator do? It takes in the food which is the data and also two other pieces of inputs, two other inputs I would say. One input is so called the objective function ok. So, idea is as follows I am here in the data world or the uh, observation world. So, this is z and I am supposed to be and, and let us say this is the world of parameters ok. So, this is your theta we will denote uh, the parameter vector by theta and I am supposed to go from here to this world and I do not know where the truth is I mean I do not know what the true value of parameter is and the, is the role of the estimator is me, uh, let us say the true value is here theta naught this is the true value. The role of the estimator is to take me to this truth. Now, the unfortunate part is I will never be able to reach the truth from finite samples. So, that is the first bitter fact about estimation. I may get very close to the truth, but I will never be able to reach the truth unless in some very academic situations ok. In, uh, in all practical situations I will always be away from the truth. So, ultimately I will probably be around somewhere here. So, let us call this as uh, this is the estimate theta hat all this uh, notations that we are using are uh, more or less the conventions that are used in estimation theory. So, I end up here and of course, <coughs> this uh, where I end up depends a lot on something that is what we are going to discover. What is it that is going to determine where I end up in the parameter world? The truth is only one for now until we hit Bayesian uh, estimation we will assume that the truth is fixed. So, you may wonder what is this then this is a space of all possible values ok. Theta naught is fixed that is the truth and estimator will take me somewhere to this theta hat this destination is unknown to me. So, I am going from the city of data to a city of unknowns and I do not know where I am supposed to go. Now, it sounds very philosophical like this guy who has broken up in the movie and he say ticket de do kaan jana hai I do not know wherever it goes and so on. So, something like that. So, I do not know wherever the estimator takes me I will go. So, I do not know unknown destination. I do not know the truth, but yet I expect the estimator to take me close to the truth. So, that sounds a bit weird to begin with, yet the problem is solvable ok. Now, <coughs> this estimator actually establishes the uh, uh, facilitates uh, this uh, theta hat for me and what connects these two worlds is the model ok. In some sense it establishes a connection between the knowns and unknowns unless this bridge exists I will never be able to reach that other city. So, the role of the model when I say model here it could be anything it could be any equation whatever it is it is some kind of mapping between the knowns which is the data and unknowns which is theta. Now, once the bridge has been constructed as you can see there is a model there there may be other constraints also accompanying this model that you know uh, you cannot go anywhere uh, this bridge may only end up at some places for example, when you are estimating let us say average temperature uh, or some other average or some other parameters there may be constraints that 
uh, parameters are non-negative valued and so on. For example, if you are estimating spectral densities, we know spectral densities are non-negative valued. So, we should guarantee, we should incorporate that information into the estimation exercise and so on. So, these are all called constraints. It is a part of your model. So, the model establishes a bridge between the knowns and the unknowns and now it is we need one more person. One we have, once we have gone into this unknown city, we need a guide. We need a guide that will take us. So, if, if you uh, think of it, you have gone to the guide and say, I do not know where I am supposed to go. There is something called truth, but take me very uh, close to the truth. Do not try this out in practice with human beings. Uh, you, uh, that person may think you are very weird, but in estimation you are allowed to do that. So, this a uh, guide that will take you very close to the truth is your objective function itself. That is, now you want to reach very close to theta naught. What is close? You have to define mathematically. You need a metric for proximity. You need a metric for distance, sorry, or closeness. And that metric can be Euclidean norm, one norm, Mahalanobis, whatever, whatever measure of distance that you have, you can use. And there are many more variants but right now you can think of uh, squared distance as being a very common uh, metric for uh, the distance itself. So, the objective function will guide me uh, very, uh, so in such a way that I reach uh, as close to truth as possible. Now, at the moment it sounds a bit strange because I do not know the truth. How will the objective function or how will the optimization problem? You can now see that there is an optimization problem because once you get into this, there are multiple solutions and among the multiple solutions, the optimizer is supposed to pick the one that is optimal in some sense without knowing the truth. So, at, uh, at this stage, things are a bit ill posed because I do not know the truth. How can it actually take me very close to the truth? But when we go through a simple example, things will become a lot more clearer. That is what is actually practiced is slightly different from what I have just said, but ultimately achieves this job of taking us close to the truth. So, these are the basic elements of the uh, estimation exercise and when you put together everything, that is when you put together the objective function, the model and any uncertainty assumptions that you have on the data, everything and then you solve the optimization problem, you end up with some kind of a formula to be crude, some kind of an expression, some formula to which you feed the data, out comes theta hat. That formula, that expression is called the estimator. So, it is like your digester, it digests everything and then produces what you need. And <clears throat> this estimator can have any form it can have a very simple form to the most complicated form. Maybe sometimes closed form expressions also do not exist. And on the other hand, you also have this uh, privilege of saying, I want to have a formula that looks like this. You can pre-impose. You can say that ultimately, I want my estimator uh, to be linear, for example, or I want the estimator to be uh, locally linear, whatever. You can presuppose and then figure out what uh, expression you get and so on. So, there are several things that you can do, a lot of variations come in. What we will do is we will go over a simple exercise that will give you a feel of what is typically involved in an estimation exercise and this is perhaps the simplest example that you can think of and we will keep uh, revisiting that example time and again. So, I am going to skip uh, a lot of these slides have talked about what we mean by information set, what we mean by model and uh, uh, I briefly talked about objective function. In this, uh, in the example that is upcoming, I will show you what impact the objective function can have on the nature of the estimation formula that you end up with, on the form of the estimator that you end up with. So, uh, I have already said that some of the commonly used objective functions are squared. Uh, distances. We will of course also look at negative log likelihood function and so on. And uh, of course, I, I also said just now that estimator is essentially that mathematical device. It is some formula or expression that computes the estimate using the information, the model and the objective function. And you should also now 
start equating the term estimator with what is known as filter. See, ultimately what are you doing? You are taking data, this raw material and you are really extracting the juice out of it and filtering out what is necessary and leaving the rest. What you are filtering out is theta, the whatever you want. When, when we talk of estimation problems, please do not think of only parameter estimation. A bit later we will talk about different types of estimation problems. There are also signal estimation problems which are very classical problems. Then there is a state estimation problem that is another uh, hot area it has been there for about 50, 60 years. So, there are different types of parameter estima uh, uh, sorry, estimation problems of which parameter estimation is one of the oldest one that has been uh, ones that have been studied. So, we will uh, talk about this filtering prediction and so on a bit later. Let us get to the example and uh, this example is that of estimating a constant signal embedded in noise. There are different two different ways in which this example can be talked of. From a signal processing viewpoint, we can say that there is a signal which is constant and I am measuring this signal. So, here is uh, the signal, this is time let us say. Theoretically, it is constant. I know it is constant okay, because I have ensured that the process conditions are such. I am supposed to get a constant, but when I measure it, I have measurement noise corrupting this. Therefore, what I have with me is some kind of noisy reading of this and from this noisy reading that is the measurement, I am supposed to estimate that constant. Okay, it is a classic problem that is studied in signal processing. The statistical perspective of the same problem is estimation of mean of a random signal. You can say that I have a random signal and I want to estimate the mean. Both lead to the same thing, but look at it. In this simple example, I, we have presented two different types of estimation problems. What are those two problems? The same problem, we have given it one flavor from a signal processing viewpoint and another flavor from a statistical viewpoint. From a signal processing viewpoint, what type of estimation problem are we studying? Signal estimation, we are, it is a constant signal that I am estimating. From a statistics viewpoint, parameter estimation. So, you see signal estimation and parameter estimation are equivalent. In general also it is true, but it is the nature of the problem and the origin of these problems that have actually resulted in a lot of different kinds of literature that you see methods that have evolved, but ultimately they meet like all the rivers meet at the sea all these problems meet, uh, they go and meet uh, at the confluence where they merge with the big estimation theory. So, a signal estimation problem and parameter estimation problem are equivalent. There is a third perspective. This is from a state estimation viewpoint. For those of you who are not familiar with state space modeling, a state is some kind of an unobserved variable that uh, gives you an idea uh, or gives you a complete picture of the system's dynamics, but it is not observed. Something else is observed, but not the state. That something else contains the information about the state. So, from a state estimation viewpoint, what you are not observing is a constant signal, that is the state. And what you are observing is the measurement. So, this is also a state estimation viewpoint. You can turn this into a state estimation problem and that is the beauty of this problem. It is so simple, but it has the flavors of all different uh, of different types of estimation problems, parameter estimation, signal estimation, state estimation. And then it also serves us in, uh, in illustrating the impact of objective function, the change of objective function and how the estimate itself changes. Okay.